How's it going friends? If you are moving to Denver from any kind of climate that does not have a winter, does not have snow, you are absolutely gonna wanna watch this video. It's just for you. Let's hit it, uh huh? New camera, let's go. How's it going friends? My name is Jesse Lynch and I work with the hardest working real estate team in the game. We are called Welcome to Denver and you can check out our website, welcome to denver.co. But this YouTube channel is all about helping you find a place to call home in Denver, in the front range of Colorado. And that's whether you're buying a house for the first time or you know relocating here from a different city, state, country, or planet. First time home buyers, relocations, that's what we do. And that's what we do better than anybody else. So if either of those two things appeal to you, do us both a favor, subscribe to the channel, click that little bell to get notified every time we put on a new video. Give this video a thumbs up. I would appreciate that very, very much. It's very helpful to the channel, very helpful to these videos, and very helpful to other folks like yourself. And leave a comment about literally anything. Again, very, very helpful to people who are, you know, trying to probably achieve the same thing that you're probably trying to achieve. Which, speaking of which, if you are trying to move here or buy a house here for the first time, Time, or at all, if I'm being totally honest, then just get a hold of us however you can and we will crush it for you. You can go to our website, welcome to denver.co. Uh, we have a contact form there, you can fill it out, it's a piece of cake. Or you can shoot us an email directly to info at welcome to denver.co and they lead to the same spot, so we'll get back in touch with you and yeah, we'll crush it for you. We'll make everything as easy as possible easy peasy. Also, just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers that we have. Uh, this channel is pretty niche, right? And uh, it's for a certain type of person and very specific. So we just want to say we appreciate everybody who has subscribed to the channel and maybe followed us on Instagram. But really, we truly appreciate everybody who's reached out and everybody who we've had the absolute pleasure of helping find a home here. It's been a blast and yeah, we're very, very grateful to y'all. Grateful to y'all just watching. Maybe uh, maybe down the road we get to work together. We look forward to it very, very much. Today's video, we're just talking must have items if you're going to survive the winter in Colorado. So let's get into it. Okay, I'm just gonna lay down a couple ground rules. Basically just like, ooh, how am I doing this video? I'm gonna say that there are four categories for uh, potential, I don't know, needs. The first of which is for the car, because I feel like the car and driving is something that a lot of people have a lot of concerns about, aside from just being cold. For your car, for your house, for your kids, and for yourself. Okay, I, I swear to God I'm gonna stop doing that. It's a new camera. It's a new camera, you know? So it's fun. It won't be fun forever, but it'll probably be there if it improves video at all. So anyways, <laughs> we're going to uh, start with items needed for your car. Um, and just, you know, again, these are recommendations, so take them as you will. I am from Minnesota, and it's colder in Minnesota than it is here. So keep that in mind, uh, but these are definitely items that as somebody who has braved very cold winters and a lot of snow, uh, yeah. I digress. Basically what I'm saying is I'm very familiar with how winter works and best ways to survive it. So let's jump into it, shall we? The first thing, uh, and I'm gonna get real like uh, dad about this, is tires. Tires on your car make all the difference in the world when it comes to snow, truly. Uh, and keep in mind, it's not just your ability to drive to accelerate, but also your ability to stop. So you could have the best brakes in the world, but if your tires are not cut out for it, you're gonna have a hard time stopping, which is the worst. <laughs> As somebody who has gone winters with bad tires, they're the worst. Uh, they're worth their weight in gold as far as like in, you know, having a tolerable time driving through the winter is concerned, truly. Uh, yeah, they're, they're very valuable. So may I recommend at least all season tires, and I'm not gonna say like buy a four wheel drive vehicle, although 
not a bad idea, uh, and <laughs> it would help you. Um, but obviously, not everybody can, not everybody is in a position to like move to a place, buy a house, buy a car. Yeah, you don't need a four wheel drive vehicle. I would say if you have a front, front wheel drive vehicle, that will be helpful and will be uh, superior to just a rear wheel drive vehicle. But you might potentially want an extra pair of rims so the tires are sitting on the rims. Uh, you know, all stuff to consider, um, but getting some good tires nonetheless is going to be very important and it will help you pretty immensely when it comes to the snow. Next up, this one I think is a little more fun. It's a little more of a luxury item. Um, and I'm a big fan. I went a long time without one. And the moment I got one, I thought, boy, I'm an idiot for not having gotten one sooner. And that is like a remote starter. Uh, I drive a Ram pickup truck and uh, this little button starts my truck uh, remotely. So I'm uh, sitting in my studio right now. I can just click this button twice my truck outside will start up. Uh, that said, these like normal remote, like the stock ones, the, the, like if, a, if your car has a stock one, it has a limited range. But most of the time that's fine. If you're at work or if you're at home, they're, I'm telling you, a car starter is so nice. If you, <laughs> if you have to park outside and there's a particularly cold day, let's say there's a, a 10 degree day, right? And your car has been sitting all night and you have to wake up, go in your car, drive to work. There's just something so cold and so frigid about the car, the process of a car warming up. And maybe you're like, well, I'll just go out there and start the car. That's cool. I mean, good on you. But personally, I like to, I like to, you know, not go out if, if I don't have to before I leave for the day. Um, so yeah, a remote starter is particularly luxurious and so worth the money. I think you can get them for, I don't know, 400 bucks, something like that. And it will help you be considerably less miserable <laughs> throughout the winter. Um, because to me, that is the worst part about winter. It's not walking from your house to your car, whatever, that's not that long. It's not walking from Target to your car. That, again, is not that long. It's about you get out there and then you get inside your car and the seats are stiff, it's just cold. And also sometimes there'll be frost on the windshield, you'll have to scrape that off. If you have a car starter, you, it's the defrost starts and psh, you're good. It, it's like you won't have to scrape. You hardly ever have to scrape your car. We'll get to what scraping your car means later. And then one other thing I would like to show you is I have, uh, these are like even fancier, not, not a phone. Um, see, that's my truck, okay? Um, I can start my car remotely from my phone, which, I mean, on the one hand, you're like, well, you already have the thing. But this can start from just about anywhere in the world. Um, as long as I have Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi? <laughs> as long as I have Wi-Fi, um, or even just, even just cell signal, not Wi-Fi. As long as I have cell signal, uh, and the car is somewhere that it has some as well, I can start from anywhere. Uh, which may again again it might you might be thinking like well that seems a bit a bit extra but think about this you go to a mall you're there for three hours or something like that maybe you're buying Christmas presents or holiday presents um, and yeah and then your car is cold so but you're too far away because you're across the mall so the only way to really be able to start your car it's with something long range and typically cellular signal based. So that's just a bonus, that's a treat. If you can get that, life will be uh, better. Life will be considerably more comfortable. Moving on, this may be uh, exceedingly obvious. It's gonna be pretty important that your vehicle has a heater. So, okay, <laughs> so uh, I don't know, maybe you have some some farm truck or something that doesn't have a heater. I mean, I guess you could, you could probably survive, but you'll be cold. So a good working order heater will be important. Some of y'all might be coming from San Diego or, uh, you know, LA or something where you don't need a heater. So you don't even know if your heater works. I mean, maybe you do need a heater there. I don't know. It doesn't get that cold though. Uh, but yeah, so a nice working heater in your vehicle is gonna be very important. Next up is going to be a scraper. A scraper is basically a stick with a sort of a hard plastic tip on it. I don't, yeah, they're not metal. That would mess up a car pretty bad. It's usually a hard plastic sort of like uh, chisel tip to it. And you can sort of scrape 
frost or ice off of your vehicle. Huge, very important. You're gonna to wanna to keep that in your trunk or your back seat pretty much at all times. Uh, I would say bonus points, and you probably are gonna want this. Uh, they, they make scrapers that have like a brush on it, right? So the, the tip has sort of a, a chisel, and then there's a brush over here. <laughs> and that is so that you can, you know, first brush off a bunch of snow. If it snows a foot or something, you're gonna to wanna to brush that off, and then you might have to chisel underneath that. That said, if you have a car starter, you might not have to. You might be able to just start it. It'll start melting it. You get inside the car, pop the uh, windshield wipers on, and uh, it's gone. So again, car starter wins. Next up is uh, maybe a little bit of a luxury and not fully necessary. I, I haven't had them, but I would say if you have the money, it's I think it's money well spent. They're called WeatherTech mats. And it, that's just a brand. So it doesn't have to be WeatherTech, although I have WeatherTech and they're very nice. They're, they feel like they're almost indestructible. Um, and they're basically like a hardened rubber mat for, for your floor mat uh, in your car. And they make them for custom to each car. So don't just like go to Walmart and buy like, oh, I'm gonna buy rubber mats. You can, but they're not even close to the same thing. So WeatherTech, specific to your vehicle, they're like form-fitted, they're very nice and yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get you know snow on your boots, on your shoes, and you're gonna get in your car. And if you don't have like nice you know rubberized mats or whatever, that water is gonna seep into the carpet and it's gonna kind of stain it and it's not gonna look that good. Um, even if you have normal mats, I mean that's fine too. Those will take the wear and tear, and then you can always replace them. But I assure you, the WeatherTech mats will just be nicer. And then you know you go to the car wash and you just. <laughs> spray them down or they do for you and you're you're good uh, and your your car will look cleaner and your floor will you know uh, carry and the interior of your car will uh, you know maintain its uh, aesthetics longer that said uh, speaking of car washes to me the next uh, thing that could be very helpful to your vehicle is like a monthly sort of subscription to a car wash uh, and like a legit car wash, I, I think is really nice. Um, I have one that I think is $25 or maybe $30 a month. You get unlimited car washes uh, on the outside. And then I think, obviously, I don't know, it's going to be different. But uh, I think for me, it's like $10 for them to do the inside, right? So $30 every month, but then I can go through the car wash a hundred times in a month and I don't get charged extra. Um, not that I do, um, but I definitely do a few times a week because, you know, snow and there's, there's salt and there's things that treat the road that are not exactly kind to a vehicle, but they are kind to you allowing to drive. So there's not ice and a bunch of snow all over the roads. So having the ability to go to a car wash and having it be more convenient and like less of a, less of an ordeal. You don't have to go to the gas station, go inside, get a car wash thing, wait in line. It's just like, you just pull up and then maybe you wait in line, but it's, it's, it's much chiller. Um, so I'm a big fan of the car wash services and they will help your car last longer and look better longer so for sure i would recommend one of those and then next up is going to be a thing called antifreeze which maybe you've heard of maybe you haven't uh if you're from a hot climate you probably know what coolant is for a vehicle this is fundamentally the same thing except it doesn't freeze so uh traditional coolant could freeze in a car's engine which would stop it from acting as a coolant which would uh you know defeat the purpose so an antifreeze coolant basically it's just made up differently so it doesn't freeze in cold weather. Um, that said, it doesn't get that cold that often, but I would say better safe than sorry. And, you know, on those couple days where it does get very, very cold, but it will just be nice to know that you don't have to worry about that. But when it does get that cold, you, it'll just be nice to know that you don't have to worry about that. Next up is basically like an emergency roadside kit. And now hold on to your hat because I'm about to get <laughs> pretty dad here. Um, no, I mean, th th basically an emergency like roadside like kit. It, there's there's all sorts of versions of it. You can go on probably Amazon and buy one. Uh, they're probably crap though if it's like che <laughs> cheap. Um, you might have like one of those emergency blankets, which I mean could be helpful if it, you know like the tin foil blankets. Yeah, there's probably something to that. Um, maybe they have like road flares and that, but I would say to me. 
the the most important things that I would leave in my vehicle in the winter, and it, it's probably obvious, but may, but maybe not. Again, if you're not from cold, then maybe not. I always leave um, like a warm coat in my car, like a warm winter jacket in my vehicle. For one, I actually don't wear my coat out that often. Um, if I'm hanging out outside for a long time, I do. Um, but I don't like to like between the house <laughs> in my car or between you know Target in my car. I don't like to wear a coat. I hate to wear a coat indoors. So if I'm going to a grocery store or a mall or something like that or a movie, I hate to bring my coat in. I don't know why. It's just it's just bulky and I don't I don't enjoy that. So. I typically always just leave it in my vehicle and I use it for emergencies or maybe I'm doing like a photo shoot or something like that and you know I'm gonna be out there for a long time cool uh, then, I, then I'll have my coat and that's nice but I always leave a nice warm coat in my car I got mine from Iceland it's really nice uh, but yeah like a legit winter coat with a hood with a I'm actually a big fan of the uh, fuzzy like the fur is probably fake fur um, yeah, it actually, it, I truly believe that it does something to cut down on wind. So uh, I actually am a fan of the fake fur around the hood. Um, so also for the car, I, I would say like a pair of boots, um, like real snow boots. They don't have to be like knee high boots or anything like that, but, but boots with, you know, enough uh, of like a leg that you can walk through, you know, I don't know, 10 inch snow, one foot deep snow, and snow is not gonna come in over the top of the boot. That will get very cold. This is basically just in the event that your vehicle uh, takes a crap on you, you know, you don't want to be stuck like just waiting for a tow truck necessarily, depending on where you are. Potentially, that's the smartest thing you could do, right? Is just wait for a tow truck if you're somewhere close and it's really cold out, but sometimes, it's not the move. Sometimes if it's, you know, let's say you're, I don't know, half a mile to a gas station or something like that. And there are days where a bunch of people are having car problems because of the weather. Uh, and so tow trucks can take a long time on particularly bad days. So it might be nice for you to be able to walk yourself to a gas station or something, a store, so you can wait in warmth because potentially your car breaks down on the side of the road, it won't start, the heat won't run. So what are you gonna do? You know, so in general, you're gonna to wanna to be prepared for that. So to me, the two biggest things are gonna be boots and a warm coat. If you have to walk a while, that's gonna be pretty important. But then next up, I would say something like jumper cables, right? And that's probably pretty obvious for a lot of places. Yeah, it's nice to have jumper cables in the event your car breaks down, but it could actually be like life-threatening in the cold. On a particularly cold day, it could be life-threatening. So, uh, you know, if your battery, sometimes batteries just don't like the cold. And if you, <laughs> so if you have a jumper cable because your battery dies, you have a much higher likelihood of just being able to ask somebody in the parking lot, hey, could you jump my car? Then, you know, if you didn't have one, hey, do you have jumper cables and can you jump my car? That's an additional ask. And that's not fun. That's no fun for anybody. So actually I'm gonna add on, roadside assistance for your vehicle would be helpful. I think I have I used to have Progressive, I don't have Progressive anymore. I have State Farm um, and I have roadside assistance and it's nice, it's peace of mind. I don't have to pay for a tow. That is probably the biggest thing. Um, if, a, if my vehicle breaks down, I just call and say, hey, my vehicle needs assistance. And they come and it doesn't cost, it hardly costs anything to add on to your insurance. So I would generally recommend that as an addition, at least ask your insurance person because I think for me it was like a dollar, a dollar extra. So generally would recommend that. And then last item for your car, specifically for this emergency kit, I'm gonna say a collapsible shovel. You never know, if you slide off the road or something, there are times where you're just in deep snow. Or let's say you park on the side of the road, a plow comes, sort of plows you in. That's annoying, but it, it happens. Um, and it might be helpful to have a shovel. They're, again, they're small, so they're not the most efficient, but to have a shovel to get yourself out of a spot and then, okay, cool, now you're on plowed road and it's all fine. Um, so yeah, a collapsible shovel can come in pretty handy and they're not that expensive and they're small and they'll fit in a trunk, so why not, you know? Okay, moving on to the next category, which is for your house. 
The number one thing that I'm just gonna say is just a shovel. Um, you're gonna need a shovel, unless you live in a, like a condo or an apartment where they take care of it, cool. But if you own a home or potentially a townhome, although they take care of that often as well, but usually you're responsible for something in a townhome, whether that just be your front walk or your deck or something like that, <clears throat> you're responsible for something typically. So a shovel will be very helpful. Um, I could go into what kinds of shovels, but it's kind of up to you. I would say don't get a really cheap shovel. The really cheap shovels are, they're just a drag and, and why? You know, you could spend 10 more dollars and get a good shovel. Also, generally I would recommend getting them before a big snowstorm. Because uh, if there's a big snowstorm and you try to go and get one, they're gone for whatever reason. Well, for obvious reasons, supply and demand, they will be gone if you wait. So <laughs> for that reason, it would be wise to get one, you know, uh, when when there's not a crazy snowstorm happening. So either before the winter starts or just on some other day in the winter when there isn't a crazy snowstorm. One thing to consider is to not get too big of a shovel. You might be uh, ambitious and you might go, ah, oh, a huge scoop, a double wide scoop, or one of those like massive bucket scoops. That looks so easy. I can just push like I'm a, an elephant or something like that. It's They're not actually that useful. Uh, I mean, they can be used, but then you have to then scoop the snow and get it out of the way, uh, which is difficult because snow gets heavy. So if you're using this big old shovel and it fills up with snow, that's gonna suck. So in general, get a shovel with a sort of uh, scoop or whatever that is uh, appropriate to your own strength. So depending on how strong you are, how much snow can you lift? That makes sense? Okay, again, that's not something that people might consider. You might feel a little ambitious and uh, just be careful with that. Next up is gonna be a space heater. Basically, just a heater that you plug into the wall, like a normal 120 out outlet, and uh, it, you know, you can point it right at you. I would say this is particularly useful for like older rentals or older homes, maybe a basement, um, if it has a basement, uh, and just because certain rooms and homes, whether it's uh, because of how the home is built or how the home is insulated, they just might be colder than others and also certain people. That is something as a, uh, you know, burly Scandinavian fella, I don't get cold that much. I am pretty comfortable at a cooler temperature and people who I live with potentially might not be, right? They might get colder sooner than me, so a uh, space heater would be helpful to them, you know, in the same way that like, I don't know, Oh, air conditioning is helpful to me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, space heater and nothing too crazy. Uh, and then, you know, make sure that it has like safety features. I wouldn't go buy some old space heater from a garage sale for $5 because it probably has no safety features at all. And if it tips over, you want it to just shut right off. The moment it tips past a certain thing, you want it to shut off. If it tips over and keeps on running, it could burn your house down. That is not fun. We don't want to burn our house down. Then we have to be outside, which is even colder. Plus we burned our house down. Uh, kind of different side of the same coin is gonna basically be like a, a drafty window film or a window film. Uh, 3M makes it, uh, other companies make them as well. Basically it's like a, it's almost like a saran wrap um, that you put over the top of a window. I would say particularly useful again for old homes with like old, you know, wooden windows from like single pane windows from back in the day or rentals with old windows, stuff like that, or just drafty windows. Sometimes somebody didn't install it right or maybe the previous homeowner did a DIY installation and didn't insulate around it at all. So then just cool air just comes through. That's not fun. So you can get this film and it helps to just create a barrier to eliminate drafts and ultimately keeps, you know, a room, uh, warmer. But that said, I think it's a little bit unsightly. So, <laughs> so uh, even if you do it well, it's just like, it doesn't look that good. So something to consider. But yeah, if, if, if you have a particularly drafty window, it's helpful and it will uh, sort of lower your burden as far as utility cost goes. Next up is gonna be like a throw blanket and specifically like a nice wool throw blanket. Shout out to Fairbolt Mills or Fairbolt Mills, if you will. Um, they're actually a Minnesota company uh, and they make really nice wool blankets. Pendleton would be a good choice as well. Like a nice legitimate wool blanket 
Yeah, and you might want a few of them for your house. They're really, really nice, and yeah, they just do the trick on a particularly cold night. That said, you could go to Target and get a throw blanket, and it would probably work just fine. Uh, but yeah, the wool ones just seem to really do a really good job. Uh, that said, an electric blanket, if you are particularly concerned or find yourself particularly uh, chilly in the winter, then an electric blanket could be just the best thing ever for you. Basically, if you don't know what it is, an electric blanket is a blanket that plugs into the wall and it has sort of like coils that go throughout it. Um, I'm sure their coil makes it seem like a little bit intense. Um, and yeah, it just, it just creates like a warmth uh, layer to the blanket and it, it really works really well. Actually, I lived in an Airstream, fun fact. I lived in an Airstream for like a year and a half and dealt with a very cold winter in it and an electric blanket probably saved my life. Uh, but anyways, that was a, a season in life and it was fun. Uh, it was a cool Airstream, so yeah. Don't, don't judge me, it's definitely a cool Airstream. But I do wanna also say be careful with the heated blanket. I would say the older technology is probably a little more dangerous, a little less fire safe. That said, my grandma Betty uh, used one forever, for as long as I ever knew her, and uh, she was using the old school ones, and I don't know, she never burned her house down. But yeah, the newer ones are probably a bit safer, and I would probably recommend using those if you can. Next up is basically gonna be an entry mat to your home, uh, you know, like a rug, except a rug, uh, that, that's not what I'm thinking. That's not what it is. An entry mat is more of like a, it's a little more industrial. It's gonna be a little less exciting. And typically, you know, you'll, you'll be able to see ones that are like yay big and they say welcome, right? So there's something like that. That is kind of the same thing, but a lot of people really like a bigger entry rug for like the foyer of the home or the foyer, <laughs> if you will. Um, and basically, you know, a bigger, more like kind of industrial looking one and just make sure that it has rubber underneath it on the bottom side. It needs to be rubberized. That way you put your wet boots on top and the water doesn't just soak through the boots onto your you know, beautiful hardwood floors or something like that. Potentially you have tile there. That's fine, but even tile, if you set it on tile, it's gonna eventually degrade your tile more than if you have you know, some kind of a, you know, rug sitting there. Also, it's gonna mean that you don't have to you know, like mop as often because it'll look kind of ugly to just have you know, wet stuff sitting there all the time. So yeah, an entry rug or something like that. Or maybe you're the kind of person who's like, shoes off in the garage or something like that. That's fine. Um, but yeah, even then, you're probably gonna want, <laughs> gonna want to uh, have a, a mat out there as well, you know, just to put your stuff on. Okay, and then last but not least for the home is going to be uh, like ice melt. So uh, again, this is only gonna be for particularly cold days or days where it snowed and then got cold or snowed and then melted and then got cold. Basically when ice is on the ground, um, for one, it's just slippery. That's probably very obvious, but you're gonna want to do something about you know avoiding the slipperiness of the ice. So ice melt is very, very helpful on those days. Maybe you have front steps, maybe you have a mailman who has to like walk and then walk up the front steps. It's gonna be nice to have ice melt so that they don't slip and fall uh, or you don't slip and fall. Um, and then one note on the ice melt, this is just sort of a personal, uh, not gripe, but a personal recommendation, personal request is that you get pet safe ice melt. Um, and it's not just for dogs, you know, you might think, well, well I don't have a dog. Well, I mean, that's cool, but there's no guarantee that some dog, somebody's walking their dog and they're gonna cross over you know the area that you put ice melt down and if there's some like caustic chemicals in there that's not awesome you know so generally i would say pet safe ice melt especially if you have a dog because it might be salty they might be interested and it might not uh be very good for them so generally again pet safe ice melt okay i'm getting off my soapbox now and we are moving on to uh the section kids what you're going to want for your kids for your babies if you're a baby watching this what's up you cool baby also shout out if you know what that's from uh that's fun uh leave a comment if you do because that's cool um <laughs> okay so uh first things first for the kid it's going to be a, a winter coat a nice winter coat and i'm going to recommend that you get like a waterproofed you know kind of the slippery winter coat because um, kids jump in the snow and while yeah like a wool one uh 
could keep them warm, uh, like a like a pea coat. Maybe that's cool. But if they jump in the snow, that's going to collect snow, and that water is going to seep through. It's going to make them colder. So like a nice, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? You know, like a, like a Christmas story, like that kind of thing, or like a Kenny from South Park kind of thing. Um, you know, nice, slippery, as close to waterproof as possible. They're, I don't know that they're ever like fully waterproof because like a raincoat wouldn't really be the move either. Um, but yeah, a nice water resistant uh, <laughs> coat. And also bonus points if they're little and you have the little mittens attached, you know, where they, where they can take their mittens off and not lose their mittens because Kids be losing stuff, you know what I mean? Next up is uh, snow pants. If you don't know what snow pants are, fundamentally, they are a coat for your legs. Uh, <laughs> and they should be uh, nice and water resistant as well. It, basically, if your kid wants to go sledding or just go build a snowman or do snow angels or whatever, if they just wanna go play in the snow, which they should because it's very fun, um, then having some kind of you know, snow pants will be very helpful. It will help them enjoy their time outside longer. And yeah, they, they won't, you know, burn out after 15 minutes because their legs are cold. So snow pants, very helpful. Next is boots. That's probably very obvious. Uh, nice winter boots, nice water resistant winter boots. And then you can sort of uh, uh, put the snow pants over the boot, get them all nice and waterproof. And yeah, oh, also shout out, uh, to sometimes the snow pants will have like a, a coverall or like an overall kind of situation where they come all the way up here, you kind of snap them here and then you put the coat over and then you are really quite water resistant. Whereas snow pants, I feel like that's more of like a, like a teenager thing. You know, it's like a snowboarder thing. They don't come all the way up, but yeah. If they don't come all the way up, then you're much more likely to get snow kind of down in your pants and that's cold. So it's all about sort of keeping, keeping dry in order to stay warm. So snow pants, coveralls or overalls if you can, boots, those are huge. Obviously gloves or mittens are gonna be huge as well. Quick gripe, I, you know there's like stretch gloves, maybe you don't, but you'll see them at like a Target or even like a Walgreens will have something like it. They're just like really cheap, little flimsy gloves and they're not good enough for a kid playing in the snow. They might be good enough for wearing like inside the house. If you're, I don't do this, but some people do I think. If you, you know, your hands get cold at home, they're basically like little uh, slippers for your hands. I, uh, you know, if, if you are very susceptible to the cold, then maybe stretch gloves might be good because you can still sort of, you have dexterity, but they're pretty much worthless outside in the cold. So generally, I'm not gonna recommend those. Again, some waterproof kind of mittens or gloves. Mittens are this kind, gloves are this kind, right? Got the thingies, mittens don't. It's kind of just up to preference, you know? I actually kind of like the mitten thing. They, it seems like the heat is sort of maintained because they're hanging out together. <laughs> Does that make sense? Uh, so yeah, mittens potentially could be uh, a wise investment for a kid. Uh, and then same sort of wardrobe-y stuff for a kid, a hat, you know, a hat would be wise, like a, like a stocking cap. I've heard people call them toboggans. That's not what I call them. I just call them a stocking cap. Um, but yeah, like a, you know, like a, like a Steve Zissou, if anybody knows that, another random reference. Uh, but yeah, you know, little hipster guy hat, except go all the way down past your ears. Um, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Very helpful. Uh, life hack, uh, I grew up by a sledding hill and my mom made my brother wear a like neon pink stocking cap so she could see him up at the sledding hill because uh, <laughs> nobody else had that bright of a hat so uh, maybe kids do now but yeah definitely a fun little hack okay and then this next one is more for like a baby okay which you know you have the car seat uh, like every baby's gonna have a car seat no matter where you're from but a nice like warm cover to the car seat is gonna be helpful and I don't have kids but my friends do and they told me this <laughs> so basically um, it kind of creates like a little cocoon, you know, you put, you put the top down and it's nice and toasty inside there. Uh, if it's snowing or something like that, then that stops, you know, the snow from getting on their face. So yeah, a cover for the car seat will be helpful. And, uh, your kid won't thank you cause they don't know words yet, but they'll be glad. 
Next up is Aquaphor. Um, basically, just like for rosy, chapped cheeks. If the kid wants to play outside, let him, but their cheeks are gonna get chapped and kind of red. Um, Aquaphor is very good for you know getting that back. It's basically chapstick, <laughs> but for your cheeks. And then next up is Boogie Wipes, and this isn't something that, I'm not calling them Boogie Wipes, that's the brand. This is from my dear friend Bradford, uh, who has a child who told me that Boogie Wipes are where it's at. It's just for, it's obvious, Boogie Wipes. And he says that brand is the best. So specifically Boogie Wipes for the winter, for your child, you can thank me later. You can thank Bradford in the comments. Next up, I'm gonna just gonna say, uh, maybe maybe this would be a good one for the car or something like that, or I guess a baby bag. Um, it's gonna be what my girlfriend calls grandma tissues, which is those little bags, you know? The little bags of, of tissues, they're like travel tissues. She calls them grandma tissues. That's probably just as self-explanatory as boogie wipes, so I, I digress. Uh, next up is gonna be a humidifier. A humidifier, basically, when it gets real cold out, um, sometimes the air loses the humidity. Um, and sometimes even when it's not that cold, right? It can get kind of dry. Um, but <clears throat> specifically in the winter, it gets cold, it gets dry, and it would be nice to bring back <laughs> some of that humidity that's gone. Specifically in a child's room, it's gonna be very helpful. Some houses have whole home humidifiers, so that's something to consider. If you do, okay, then maybe you don't need that, but potentially a child's room wants to be a little more humid, a little more cozy. That said, don't overdo it. If you overdo a uh, humidifier, then potentially it will cause condensation to build up on the inside of the windows because it's cold outside and dry outside. Warm inside, humid inside, humidity starts on the window and then it drips down and if you have wooden frames to your windows, that just slowly starts to rot windows. I've seen a lot of homes with real rotten windows which is why I mention it. Um, so just be careful. If there's noticeable like droplets of water on the inside, I would say you've gone a little too far um, and dial that back just a little bit. And then next is gonna be fun stuff, uh, just generally fun winter stuff. I'm gonna say a sled. Uh, there's nothing more fun as a kid than sledding. I mean, maybe snowball fights, <laughs> maybe, but that's also painful. Um, so yeah, also sleds can be used as shields in snowball fights, so sleds are important. Um, but that said, I wanna give a couple uh, little pieces of caution. Number one, toboggans, they're actually pretty dangerous. Like if they have like, uh, if they're wooden, if you fall, the, the wood can hit, can hit you and they can be pretty violent. So depending on how young your kid is, I don't know, a toboggan, they can also go very, very fast potentially. So, mm, a plastic sled is gonna be a safer, just easier thing for a kid. It's also way easier to bring to the sledding hill and pull up and down the hill or whatever. So a lightweight sled is gonna be good. Um, <clears throat> that said, also a tube, right? So like an inner tube or like a donut tube, I don't, <laughs> I don't recommend them. They were fun, but they're very fast. And uh, yeah, I, I, I got personally just wrecked one day as a kid. Um, yeah, went down a hill. There was like a jump that I didn't know was there. I was holding onto the tube. I went off the jump and uh, the tube went out from under my butt, landed on my tailbone and just cried the whole way home. It was terrible, uh, very dramatic. And yeah, I wouldn't recommend it, it hurt. Uh, I also had a friend on the, his birthday, went down a hill, went backwards like that and uh, hit the back of his head on a tree. So you, a, a tube is very difficult to steer. At, at the end of the day, a tube is very difficult to steer. So a sled, I'm gonna recommend a sled as just the safest, most fun, easiest kind of option. Also the cheapest, usually. Uh, and you don't have to blow it up like a, like a tube. So yeah, a sled, super fun. And then last but not least is ice skates. If that's something your kid is into or if that's something you're into, having the ability to skate on ice, especially if you can get outdoor ice, it's so much fun and yeah, it's very much like, you know, will be a part of childhood. So I would recommend ice skates, whether that's figure skates or hockey skates or something like that. Definitely super fun. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to just the section of things for you. I'm gonna assume that you are an adult watching this. If not, what's up? Um, but yeah, so specifically things for you. The first thing I'm gonna start with is just like a winter jacket. And actually I'm gonna say, three winter jackets. 
I'm gonna call them Papa Bear, Mama Bear, Baby Bear. Basically, Papa Bear is, is actually it's the one that I leave in my car pretty much all the time. Um, it's like the really, really warm one. Uh, and you might even want two. You might want one in your car and one not in your car. Um, but the really warm coat for the very, very cold days or the days where you're gonna be out for a long time. Um, and yeah, again, that's gonna be potentially like down, like lined and down, it doesn't have to be. Um, and you know, with a hood, again, the fake fur is awesome. But yeah, a nice heavy coat, you know, that zips up that you're just like, whew, okay, I'm ready to go. Uh, and yeah, but then you don't want too warm all the time because if it's not that cold, you don't want to get too sweaty because getting sweaty uh, is actually not a good thing in the winter because you get uh, sweaty and wet and then that wetness gets colder because of the cold air and it actually makes you colder. It makes you chilled to the bone more. Yeah, I actually personally, I hate to wear my coat inside I, I hate to I actually also hate to wear it driving so I like to basically it, it, like only if I'm going outside do I put a coat on and then I like to just bear the cold as I walk from vehicle to indoors or indoor to indoor or something like that uh, yeah I would rather bear with the cold than <laughs> than bear with dealing with the coat um, that's just personal preference but so having a, a very very warm coat is going to be big on those very cold days or days where you're outside for a long time maybe you have kids and maybe they want to go sledding you're going to want that nice warm coat so you can sort of sustain for longer and then you're going to want like a medium coat you know where it's more of a i'm going to call it the daily driver right that's probably the mama bear where you're just you're comfortable in it it takes the chill off and you know but maybe you're not going to hang out for an hour outside in that but you know from your car to your office or your car to home or whatever or going out to check the mail or something you know littler stuff it's going to be the one to put on so you don't feel quite as <laughs> bulky and then the last of which is it's going to be like a you know the least intense coat for the days that are you know cold but not crazy you know maybe you're going to go for a walk so you know you're going to kind of be uh getting some <clears throat> warmth going from yourself uh, you don't want to just be sweating by the end of it. Again, that could lead to actually being colder. So three types of coats I'm going to say will be very helpful. Next up I'm going to say is gloves or mittens, same as a kid, or choppers. Uh, I don't know if they call them choppers. That's what I grew up calling them. Basically they're mittens, but they're leather and they're like big, hardy, you know, thick gloves. Sometimes they're usually they're lined with like a like a wool and then it's leather and that those I mean you could wear you could be outside for a very long time and your hands would never get cold that said you lose a lot of the dexterity because you have this big stuff it's like boxing gloves almost not quite but kind of <laughs> on your hands um, so yeah you lose some of the dexterity uh, so something to consider uh, but I, I'm a fan of those if I'm shoveling that's the way to go you know if I, if I have to spend a while shoveling snow or you know doing something on a car or something like that you're definitely gonna want to have like changing a tire. If I had to change a tire on a cold day, choppers would be it. Even though maybe putting lug nuts on or whatever would be difficult, still though, you'd be uh, much better off having something super warm for that. No shade intended. Those stretch gloves are pretty much worthless unless you want to wear them inside. Next up I'm gonna say is two types of boots. Uh, the first of which I'm just gonna call snow boots, like legitimate, you know, big old buckets and, and they probably come up to your calf or higher. Uh, and yeah, they, you can walk in deep snow and not get wet and stay nice and toasty. Those are good for, again, if you're playing with your kid outside, if you are shoveling snow, those are going to be the move most of the time. And then the other type would just be like daily drivers. I'm going to just take my boots off is going to be what I'm going to call daily drivers. Something like this. Okay, nice tread on the bottom. And uh, yeah, these are made by Tom's. I'm a big fan. They're very comfortable. Uh, a little bit worn in, but yeah, they're good. You can walk in, you can walk in snow and uh, it's not gonna ruin your day. Um, but you also don't wanna walk in one foot deep snow because it's gonna come in the top, which will also 
potentially ruin your day. A couple other boot companies that would be legit would be Red Wing um, or like Merrill or something like that. Um, for the snow boots, maybe like Sorrel, um, Sorrel, <clears throat> yeah. For snow boots, maybe something like Sorrel, but there's ton, you know, there's tons of kinds of that. Sorrel, I think, are the higher end, you know, type of thing. But not that I know anything about that. Next up is going to be wool socks. I actually have wool socks on right now. Don't want to take them off though. Um, but yeah, and actually, you know, there's different thicknesses of wool socks, so you know, it depends on maybe having a few different thicknesses is going to be nice. Some real thick ones for you know the playing in the snow kind of days and then some mediums for, you know, your daily driver boots and maybe some lightweights for, maybe for the same things, for the same boots or just for hanging out or something like that. Uh, special shout out to Merino Wool. Merino Wool is just a very efficient, nicely made type of wool and it actually wicks the sweat away from your body. So again, sweat is not good in the cold because then it turns to cold water on your body. So getting that sweat away from your body is very helpful and merino wool supposedly does that and i would say it seems to it, these these uh socks that i'm wearing right now are merino wool and they are tremendous so i would recommend merino wool but they are kind of expensive maybe like 20 dollars a pair but you don't need that many you know they're not they're not maybe everyday use socks next up is just going to be a hat or a hood I never really wear a hat. Um, there are certain days <laughs> where I wish I did, but uh, just a, co a coat with a hood um, usually does the trick for me where, you know, I, I'm, maybe I have a hot head or, <laughs> or something like that, but uh, you know, uh, I can put the hood up when I'm particularly cold and eventually my ears will, will kind of warm up. The, the big thing is just keeping the, you know, the tops of your ears warm because uh, that seems to be the first thing to get cold. I guess it's the closest thing to an extremity. Um, and yeah, if you, have a, if you have a hat, again, one of those hipster hats, toboggans like some people call it. I don't know, that's so weird to me. Toboggan is a sled. So, toboggan, cool. Uh, <laughs> I'm so curious. Do you call it a toboggan? I would love to know in the comments. Do you call a hat a toboggan? Also, where are you from? Because where is that from? I don't know. Anyway, stocking cap or a hood. Next up is going to be a scarf. It doesn't have to be like a fashion scarf. It can just be a nice wool scarf. Um, on a particularly cold day, again, this is probably like the cold days where, you know, you're gonna go hang out in the snow for a long time. Maybe you're gonna go ice skating. A scarf is weirdly nice. Also, it's very easy to take off. Um, so if it gets too hot, cool. You can even just, you know, throw it over your shoulder, not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, scarf, to me, keeping your neck and kind of your face warm actually is much more helpful than I ever would have thought. I never wore them growing up until I was an adult and then I wore one once and I was like, oh, this is the nicest thing. So yeah, uh, I'm not afraid of a scarf, maybe a skiing day or a snowboarding day. Again, that's gonna be huge. Uh, just It's just very nice. That said, sometimes skiing, snowboarding days, you get a little too hot. So <laughs> again, on those specific days, uh, just be careful or, or bring a couple options before you go so you can kind of determine what you need for warmth. Because you might be like, oh, I'm sweating my butt off uh, while I'm skiing or snowboarding. Next up is a thing called long underwear. I actually never wore long underwear growing up. We just didn't do it. We were wearing, we were wearing snow pants um, and just like normal pants all the time. Maybe it's because we're Scandinavian, but I never ever wore long underwear growing up uh, until I, and then I was an adult and I had friends who did. Um, and yeah, so that's interesting. But basically long underwear is, is like a, a layer of like knit pants or they also have long underwear that are shirts. Um, these are long sleeve shirts because that makes sense. Um, and they're just like an extra layer of <clears throat> very warm material. You usually put them under your jeans and like under a sweater or something and it helps keep you warmer. Again, I never ever wore it. Um, it also adds some girth to your legs and to your, to your body. So maybe if you don't want to have to wear a coat, um, long underwear could be the move. Maybe you don't want to deal with the bulk. Uh, then yeah, long underwear could be the move. Next up, I'm just gonna say slippers. Shout out to slippers. They're so nice on a, on a cold, you know, a cold night or something like that, or a cold morning. Um, you know, if you have, especially if you have tile floors or something like that, or maybe a, 
concrete floors or basement or anything like that where the floor is doesn't re retain heat very well or actually mostly retains cold then it can be really nice to have slippers um, you know to walk into the bathroom where you have the tile or something like that slippers are really nice um, or even just you know walk in into the garage or something like that slippers are huge but I suppose that doesn't matter but I suppose that part is uh, probably true even if you're not in a cold area but yeah some nice fuzzy slippers with or without the heel definitely is helpful in the winter next up i'm just going to say chapstick you know the air can be just dry here all the time so chapstick is always uh, generally uh, welcome but for sure in the winter it gets worse some nice chapstick you'll figure out which brands you like but i would say uh, play around a little bit with which brands you like. There are some organic ones that actually think work better than, you know, like a traditional, like a chapstick or something like that. But sometimes the organic ones don't work very well at all, if you catch my drift. Next up, this is uh, pretty cool. I I'm a fan of these. As a photographer, as somebody who does a lot of uh, work with my hands, you know, outside <laughs> of my like coat, and gloves can be annoying when you are dealing with the camera. Uh, hand warmers and hand warmers there's actually kind of two kinds of hand warmers that I'm thinking of the kind that is probably most accessible and easiest to use for like a you know somebody who's not doing this all the time they're basically little packets I think hot hands is one of the brands you open the package they're two little bags with salt or, or, or like a sand of some sort in inside of them I don't even know what's in them so you open the packets and then you just sort of shake the uh, the bags and then that sort of activates the, the, the heat and you put them in your pocket. That's typically what I do. Or you can, if you have mittens, you can put them in there. Um, but yeah, I put them in my pocket and then that way, you know, I'm shooting, blah, 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 blah. And then I, my hands get chilly, put them in my pocket and it gets nice. It's maybe like 90 degrees in there and yeah, they start to warm your hands up real quick. You can take them back out and have dexterity without any gloves on um, and know that you can just put your hands back in there and it'll warm up. So hand warmers are great. There's also like uh, more of like a reusable hand warmer situation. I know a Zippo makes them, like Zippo the lighter company makes them. They're like a little silver, I don't know, uh, thing. It's almost like, imagine like a really big lighter um, and you use like Zippo lighter fluid. Somehow you start it, but it's not like an active flame, you know, like burning, but somehow you start it and it keeps like a, a, a little thing going and you can kind of put that in your pocket and that is like a reusable, refillable and potentially less, uh, I don't know, caustic or whatever than whatever chemical is in the bags. So I think if you, maybe you're outside all the time, maybe you're a fly fisherman in the, in the winter or uh, an ice fisherman or something like that, then that might be helpful. Um, but if you're an ice fisherman or a fly fisherman, you probably know that, but I don't know. Okay, and then, <laughs> okay, and then last but not least, this is special shout out. I, I'm a big fan of this stuff. Um, I have pretty dry hands. They're actually not too bad today um, because I've been using this stuff. Um, it, obviously like lotion, hand lotion, whatever, that's cool. Um, but to me, there's no better solution for actually like really dry uh, winter hands than this stuff called Working Hands. It's made by a company called O'Keefe's. They're not a sponsor. Um, what a random sponsor that would be, but I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, it's like a little tub, almost like a balm. I use it where I wash my hands, <clears throat> kind of pat dry, but not all the way dry. And then you rub the working hands on and it sort of like traps in that moisture and does a very, very good job. Um, my hands would be just a nightmare. <laughs> if, if I didn't use that, it would be, it would be terrible. So uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. Okay, so O'Keefe's Working Hands. And that finishes, that rounds out the uh, For You section. With all that said, I hope this video has been as helpful as it has been fun to make. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why this was particularly fun, just kind of, you know, loosey-goosey. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. As always, if you are thinking about moving here, then we absolutely implore you to get a hold of us however you can. Go to our website, welcome to denver.co. We have a contact form there, fill it out, piece of cake, or shoot us an email directly to info at welcome to Denver. Dot co. And as always, as you exit the video, please do so safely. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell to get notified if you have not done so 
yet, just so you can see all these tremendous videos, tremendous videos, <laughs> and uh, give the video a thumbs up and you know leave a comment of any kind. I'm curious if I missed anything that you're like, hey dummy, you totally missed this thing. You know what I mean? I bet I missed something. So if you have any insight or maybe you uh, disagree with me on anything, that's fine. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to, you know, folks like yourself or maybe if you're from here, folks who uh, are not used to it would love to see what other people have to say for things that you like to survive the winter. Because personally, I'm a Scandinavian through and through. The cold doesn't bother me that much. So perhaps there are people who are more sensitive to it. <laughs> who uh, could benefit from another person who's more sensitive to it. All right, thanks for hanging out. This has been, hopefully, a very helpful video about things that you might need to survive the winter here in Denver. Have a good one. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.